Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Lilith Viking. Welcome to my channel. All right, today we're gonna, I'm going to be talking about the French Foreign Legion. So I just spent five months in the French Foreign Legion, and I know before I went, I was looking up a lot of information. You know, I was on Cervens, I was you know all YouTube documentaries, just googling everything, and. I just found that, you know, there isn't really a ton of information. So I assume you're watching this because you want to know a little bit more. So I'm going to be as honest as I possibly can give you as much information as I can. I'm going to try this and make this fairly detailed. Uh, I'm going to do like a three part thing. This is going to be part one. It's going to be all selection. It's going to be part two. Um, that'll be uh, life at the farm. And part three will be after the farm life at Castel. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so when I went, I went to Paris. Uh, I got a hotel the first night. I was like, you know, I'm gonna get a good sleep, I wanna eat good, I wanna show up like super fresh because I was thinking like it's gonna go like boom, boom, hardcore right away. No, absolutely not, absolutely not. I showed up and you had your passport in. You do pull-ups right away. So you'll do some pull-ups, you gotta meet the minimum or they'll send you home. Then you do a quick like aptitude test. Super simple. I wouldn't even overthink it. I didn't even know it was coming uh, when I showed up, and it, it was it was absolutely nothing. I didn't see. I don't think anyone go home for that. Like maybe one guy, but you'd have to be really dumb not to make that. As there's a lot of people that I'm pretty sure have about half a brain in their head. Maybe all over all over the legion there. Take that for what you will. Don't over sweat, don't over sweat anything. When you do your pull-ups, they'll write your number on your hand. So everybody's sort of comparing each other, sizing each other up, right? But you know, you'll make, you'll actually make friends right away. You'll be surprised because there'll be someone who speaks the same language as you and right away you'll just be like, oh yeah, buddy, buddy, let's go. So everybody's kind of broken up into like the mafias. So you've got your English mafia, you got your like South American mafia, the Russian mafia, you've got, you know, like all the diff, like the big sort of groups of people just like clump together and they all hang out all day. So shortly after you show up, you'll get uh, a change of clothes. So it was like, uh, for us, it was like a blue, blue track pants and um, a red hoodie. Um, this just for Fort de Jean, I believe in Oban, you just stay in your civilian clothes. So you stay in that and you live in like this little compound for about a week. Bring a towel and bring shampoo with you. I'll leave a list of stuff to bring in the description below. I did not bring a towel or shower gel. I had to pay 20 euros, which is like 45 Canadian. Well, I had to buy like a little hand towel off a kid who ripped me off. He was a French kid. Ripped me off for 10 euros for this dinky little thing. And uh, yeah, then shower gel for, for another 10 bucks. Bring flip-flops for the shower, absolutely. And make sure you bring running shoes because that's what you're gonna be in the whole time. Yeah, I wouldn't advise bringing anything too valuable. So you're gonna spend a lot of time doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. You're gonna be bored out of your mind. You'll hear the same one Eminem song on this Dizium Rep video like over and over and you'll be miserable as hell. Other than that though, you'll learn to play some cool games with just rocks and stuff and then yeah and corvée get used to corvée so corporal chefs and stuff are going to come out pick guys randomly throughout the day and send guys off doing stuff as well as there's going to be lots of guys who are waiting for different tests and stuff to happen so shortly after you're there within at least a day or two you'll get your name changed um so your name will get changed it'll be something really simple it'll be related to yours it'll be yeah it'll be simple your birthday will get changed, it'll change your parents' names. It's kind of unimportant, but they do it anyways. And food, like food in Fort de Jean, I found was actually fairly good um, compared to what you'll be eating later. So like in Oban, the food wasn't quite as good. Uh, you know, and the French, there, so there's quite a bit of French fries. You know, a lot of the food is just like straight carbs. It's just, you know, and it's, it's, it's all fairly subpar. But I found Fortin de Jean was definitely like was better. Um, your breakfast is always going to be a piece of bread, and then you have you know like a jam or chocolate sometimes or honey or whatever, and you can put it on your bread, so it's livable. And after once your name is changed and stuff, you'll be get you'll start doing a few like tests. 
So you'll have a couple interviews like, why are you here? You know, it's, it's all very straightforward. It's like two or three different interviews where they're just kind of asking the same questions. Like, why are you here? What did you used to do? A um, little bit about your family, just, just little bits here and there. And like nothing crazy, crazy. It's all, it's all straightforward. I don't think it's pass or fail. And then, and then you do, you do do a medical though. And the medical does get a lot of guys sent home. So what they're looking for, you know, like obvious scars, uh, any movement problems, anything like that. So I actually broke my ankle two years ago. Uh, yeah, so two summers ago playing rugby and I needed metal put in. So I had a plate and screws. I had like six screws in my ankle. I'd been planning on joining the Legion now. So I, I knew I couldn't have metal in my leg. So the following year, I had to wait a full year to get the metal out and I had to wait till it was decently healed. And then I got, got, went and got an x-ray so that I didn't think there'd be like any holes or anything left in my bone. So I got an x-ray done and it was just, I, and I just got a copy of it, like a photocopy, just a printed off piece of loose leaf photocopy kind of thing. And uh, that worked. They, I got in, there was no problems. They just asked me if there was pain. I said no, um, which wasn't a lie. And yeah, it was, everything was good. So it is possible. Just make sure you guys have your, your information squared away ahead of times. If all that goes to good, and once you pass your medical, then you're cleared to do the, uh, the fitness test. Fitness test is just a uh, loop de leisure, which uh, you can find, you know, tons of videos on it. It's super straightforward. It's a beep. You got to get to the other side after a beep. So you'll do that and then you'll, and you'll do pull-ups and the minimum for that is four, um, you know, full locked out and you know chin over the bar straightforward but you you wouldn't believe how many guys cannot do a chin up like that and then once you pass all that then they send you to oban or if you're already in oban you just get moved over to uh, the blue stage so now what happens when you're at that stage is they file you into the the center and you everyone strips down completely naked um they give you like a three pack of underwear everyone gets that so you slip into your new your new pair of undies and everyone lines up and you get your uh, you get your name or you get your photos taken of tattoos scars whatever right you know headshot and then you go back into like a back room and you everyone they you get handed a pair of socks uh tracksuit uh pants top um since i was there in the winter time in december we also got like a camouflage jacket to wear uh and then of course you're gonna be wearing your your shoes that you, you showed up, not maybe showed up with, but your running shoes. I went with two pairs of shoes. I had my running shoes in my bag and then I had my regular shoes. You could probably just wear your running shoes. My other shoes I ended up just tossing in the garbage uh, later anyways. So yeah, do that and everyone goes upstairs and you do an aptitude test now. So they follow you into like a computer room and you do a couple different tests all with different things. Like some have to do with shapes, some have to do with math, some have to do with, um, like words and stuff. Um, there's also like a personality thing where you you pick your most, like it'll give you a combination of like maybe five words, you know, like lazy, active, just things like that. And then you have to pick the attributes you're more like and then least like. And then of those, you'll do that again. And you do that a couple different times. And then that has to do with Apparently that has a lot of weight on how they decide, but I really couldn't tell you. And then over the days while you're in Oban, you'll be getting more tests. You'll be doing your psychology test, or sorry, your psych test kind of thing. It's just an interview with a guy just kind of talking, just trying to figure out like your, your ha old habits and stuff. Like, you know, why are you coming to the Legion? Um, trouble with the law, uh, anything outstanding back home, etc. And then you have your Gestapo meeting as well. It's kind of a combination of all the interviews you've had kind of in one and they're just sort of like checking to make sure you've kept the same story essentially throughout everything. They'll be on Google Maps and they'll be searching the like the addresses of the places like if you've said any addresses or like a building or a company or anything they'll be still be searching things like that. Your Facebook, uh, if they ask you to unlock your phone they will go through your pictures. So just try not to have a reason for them to have opened up your phone, like have all the information memorized um, or just delete everything. 
then you've got you've got a bunch of medicals as well uh, in Oban again. Um, they're not quite the same as uh, the one like they're they're a little more a little more in depth. Just asking, just a little more personal kind of stuff, um, and just going over again what the first medical what happened during the first medical. Um, so you should be for the most part. I didn't see anyone not get past that. If you made it past the first medical, you typically got past the last couple of medicals. However, once we got, once you do go rouge, there are more medicals that happen that can possibly prevent you from staying. I didn't see a ton of guys go home from that, but there was a couple guys that yes, after we went red, they got held back into like the SES section for a while. Um, until they were cleared medically to go or some guys just they actually just got sent home home because they do a little bit of blood work and stuff Then actual life in Oban from it's it's fairly um, From Fort de Najan to Oban. It's it's a very different day and just in terms of like the routines um, So in Oban you've got a whistle and depending on if you're blue or red you respond to either one blast or two blasts of the whistle um, and then you've got your corvée, and it's a little more like everyone's kind of filed up a little bit better. Um, Oban has a nice yard though to hang out in. It's got like a pull-up bar, dip dip station, you know, a bunch of like you know benches, different things you can kind of hang out, sit around, talk with like friends and stuff. It's it's actually it's actually fairly relaxed. Like if you're not doing corvée, so it's kind of nice. You can do a little bit of exercise and stuff. It's it's actually not bad. It beats it beats Fort de Jean, you know, by far. And I would recommend going in the winter time as well, actually, just because I was talking to some guys who'd been in the summer and they said it was like weeks before people had even had like their first interview. So, you know, I managed to get through the entire selection from Paris right to just, you know, leaving Rouge, going to Castel. It took me about just about a month. And that's having gone in the winter time when I did. And yeah, talking to some other guys, they said it was way busier in the summer. So that's just food for thought. It will be cold when you're at the farm though. That I do guarantee. So it's, a, it's kind of up to you what, you what you want to do. And then for the rest of your day, like Paris, you know, 5.30 wake up roughly and, you know, 10, 10.30, kind of depending on what's going on, you go to bed. Whereas in Oban, it's, you know, it's about the same times and, and stuff. Like the day is structured roughly the same, but, at, but before bed, the rouges are in charge of the blues. So different rouges are assigned different um, bed, like um, rooms and they're in charge of that room. So each room will run to the showers and we had to shower outside and all the rouges are standing around, like staring at their watches and you only get 30 seconds, you're in, you rinse off quick and you're out kind of thing. And then you're in your room, you stay in your underwear. So you stay in your underwear and you gotta get your bunk made and your pack has to be set up with your clothes on it at the, at the uh, end by the wall. So you flip your bag inside out and you put your stuff there. I should mention, yes, once you do go blue, all of your belongings are then taken away. You don't have your possession of your civilian clothes or anything. Um, you know, your money, electronics, all that was taken away at the very beginning when you came in. They will give you all the essential stuff you do need then. So you will get a towel by then. You will get, you know, shower gel deodorant, uh, a razor, shaving cream, all of that. They give you all of that. So, uh, so that's definitely, so you don't have to worry about your own stuff. So you have your bag and you gotta pack it up all how it's supposed to be. And, um, and then the rouges are in charge of like teaching new guys who just kind of showed up and other stuff like how to do it. You go from the civilian to the blue stage every, every Tuesday and every Thursday. So every Tuesday, every Thursday, guys from the cage in Oban move over with the rest of the uh, rest of the guys, and trains from uh, Paris head to Oban with uh, the guys from Paris. Nothing happens on the weekends, so if you show up on a weekend, nothing's gonna happen. My my best, the best day I think you could show up would be on Sunday night or like a Monday morning. Because Monday morning, you'll get in, you'll kind of roll, and then you've got, and by the end of that week, you should have most stuff done. And every Thursday, the rouges are picked. So now you've made it this far. You're red. So the reds get to wear the uniform now. You turn your tracksuit in, you get your uniform. 
um, your boots and you get a red patch and that you wear on you at all, all the time so people know your rouge and now you have to start over the course of that week you have to start learning the, um, the Legionnaire's Code of Honor you're expected to have the entire thing memorized by the end of that week uh, I did have it memorized by the end of that week but there's a lot of guys who just don't and it's gonna bring you down there's gonna be a lot of guys that are learning too slow because they're either too long like spend time with the guys that you know you speak the same language but take the initiative as well especially with them if they're okay with it learn how to count learn how to you know learn the commands learn the code of honor like practice french together as well it really helps um i didn't speak any french you know besides bonjour before i went there so in paris still by the end of my first weekend there i had the entire uh i could count from one to a hundred in french and essentially then if you can count to a hundred you can count to a thousand or at least 999 essentially but learning the word for a thousand is you know it's easy after that so you can essentially you can you know and there was a lot of guys after two months of, of basic training all still that couldn't even count to 40 you know guys struggled getting to 20 so don't be like that like take the time and practice that's that will be big you don't have to know anything going there but when you're there learn now you guys you get your kit issued you do a little more testing you also yeah and you have to practice and stuff and then you go through a lot of other stuff you got to start filling out your bank information all that kind of different things so you'll do all that like people will come in and you start signing for stuff so you can they can open up accounts and stuff for you and yeah it's all it's all fairly straightforward and then you look after the um the rouge or sorry the blues uh every night and you're kind of, you're in charge of them you know a little bit in the morning um you don't do as much corvée as a red because you're busy just doing so many like tests and kind of running around and stuff, but you do still do corvée, yeah. And then after it's been a week for you there as a red, you go off to Castel, and I will talk more about that in the next episode. Feel free to leave any questions or comments or anything in the comment section below, and I will do my best to answer just about everyone. Um, if I've answered the same question like five ten times i'm just gonna refer you um to read more but yeah feel free to ask me anything you want and i'll try to get back to you you know as much as i can and you know maybe at the end of this i'll make a you know another video maybe just addressing some more stuff i've probably left some stuff out or you know i'm just kind of on the top of my head here just trying to remember it all so yeah absolutely feel free to ask and comment by all means anyways Till next time. And it's gonna line up with your initials. So if your name's Jason Bourne, you know you might get Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh shit. No, you might get Jeffrey Boner. <laughs> okay, anyways. Yeah, so if your name is, you know, Michael Gilbert, you might get Max Gobson.